Hey there. This video is to help you with the method of mixing your reactants for your rates of reaction lab. Your main reactants that we'll be using will be the baking soda and you'll be adding that to vinegar. Total cost of probably about four or five dollars. And the idea is that we'll change the concentration from really, really concentrated, so maybe 100% vinegar, down to a lot less concentrated, so only something like maybe 40% concentration. And we're going to measure the time it takes for the reaction to completely finish. So that's what we're doing. So there's our different concentrations. Uh, you're going to add a fixed mass of bicarbonate of soda, also known as baking soda, uh, to each solution. And this should help you uh, see the effect of changing the concentration on the rate of reaction. You'll time the length of time for each reaction to take place. And if you want to be very scientific about it and go for increased accuracy, you'll do three different trials at least and take a mean. And that will give you an independent variable of the concentration of vinegar and a dependent variable of time. Okay, And you'll also have control variables which you'll need to identify, but we'll talk about that in class. At the end of this, you will plot a graph with your mean data from here versus your concentration so that you will be able to establish the relationship. Maybe it's a straight line, maybe it's a curve that goes like this, maybe it's a curve that goes like that. Who knows? So it's up to you to investigate it. So how do you mix your different concentrations? So first thing you're going to need is a glass with a straight side. So maybe something like this one here in the video. This is maybe a bit too big, but in an ideal world, we'd all have a measuring cylinder or a beaker. So we want it to be a glass with straight up and down sides, because if it was a different shape, maybe with sloped sides, then we'd be changing the concentration incorrectly. So right now, what you will need to do is get a dry wipe marker and a ruler. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure equal intervals, maybe one centimeter, maybe half a centimeter, whatever you want to do. And this will enable you to mix up different concentrations. So with your vinegar, if you fill it up to the sixth mark here and then fill the rest up with water, that would mean it was 60% concentrated. If you use nothing but vinegar, that would obviously be 100%. If you fill up to grade number nine here, interval number nine, and then put in a little bit of water, only 10% water, that would be your ratios there. So wherever you mix it to, if you mix the vinegar to interval number four and fill the rest up with water, that would be 40% vinegar solution. Have a look at these mixtures here and see if you can figure out what percentage of concentration they are. The first one is obviously 100%. Figure out what the other ones are. Pretty straightforward, 70%. 20% and then 80% at the end. So the concentrations are determined by the marks there. A couple of tips for you. Be safe. You've got to do a risk assessment anyway, but if you're working with acid and glass and water, there's some fairly obvious risks that you've got to assess. Glass will need to have straight sides. Otherwise, every time you change your mark, your interval there, you'd end up with more and more vinegar every time. The concentration would vary in an uneven way. Mix your solution, and then you could do all three trials and take a mean afterwards. So if you add the times together of all three trials and divide by three, this will give you your mean time. So mix up the solution, then do three separate trials and that will enable you to get the experiment over and done with in probably less than half an hour. It's quite straightforward. And then think about what happens if you get a weirdo result, if you get an anomaly or an outlier. You might want to repeat. You might want to ignore it. It's entirely up to you. So if you get something like 10 seconds for the first trial, 
20 seconds for the second trial and 11 seconds for the third trial, there's an obvious outlier. You might just want to repeat it again. Okay?